without further ado, let me start formally. So welcome to this conference about productive hospitality. Uh, we'll be talking about the true capabilities of ML, AI, chat GP, GP4, whatever these things are. So we'll be talking seriously, we'll be discussing what these things are, why they matter, why you should care but even knowing what this is about. And we have today our um, three speakers who I'm gonna introduce right now. We have uh, François Guello, he's a co-founder and CEO of Enzo Connect. And Evan Dolgo, he's the head of productive hospitality at Adaptive. But let me just see how they are. François, Evan, how are you? We're good, we're good. We're in Toronto. We're in the same uh, same office space today. So it's the uh, the best kind of webinar to be able to do it live like this. So maybe uh, François, we'll go and maybe uh, explain a bit who you are and what you do. 100%. So my name is François. I'm one of the co-founders of Enzo Connect. Uh, and basically what we do is we help digitize and monetize your guest experience. So we plug into your PMS, we help you with automating the communication and of course a boarding pass, which is a fully customizable web app that will drive you, your guests and of course your operations team through that entire guest journey. Awesome. Uh, Evan Dalgo, machine learning consultant with Adaptive. And long story short, we personalize every guest booking journey. So personalized website, personalized marketing, the idea is, is that everyone expects a personalized experience. So instead of having a generic or random website, every website is personalized to that guest in real time. Every marketing email sent is personalized to that user as well. And we'll dive more into that later. We hear about AI everywhere. We hear AI this, AI that. You're using AI. I want to use AI. But what does that really mean? And the reality is it doesn't mean much because AI or artificial intelligence isn't exactly a science by itself. It's this generic term that people say anytime they're using ChatGPT or something that's remotely AI. But what it really means is something referring to machine learning and natural language processing. So machine learning is the ability to take all the data and ingest it and make sense of it. Because right now, machine learning, right now without machine learning, your data is just not talking to each other. So by interconnecting all of that data in one place, a machine learning engine can understand what is your core business? Who are your core customers? And then it can make decisions. And if it makes a right decision, it doubles down on it. And if it makes a wrong decision, it never does it again. And that same machine learning powers ChatGPT, which is natural language processing. But instead of maybe showing pictures or something else, it's using words and it's learning from the feedback you give it. So if you ask it a question and you say wrong answer, it will learn that you don't like that and it will try to improve. So it's the idea of constant feedback, constant improvement, and the more data you give it, the better it gets. So I think that's a good, uh, a good precedent to set before we dive deeper into what is AI and ML, because everything revolves around ML. So it's good to have that foundational knowledge. So I'm Thibault, I'm the, the, the head of Rental Scale Up. It's a short-term rental uh, news uh, website. We have a free newsletter every uh, Wednesday. Uh, yeah, so what we did actually, and uh, we, we, we've covered a lot, obviously, uh, chat GTP, for example, because ourselves, you know, we are, you know, we write about the industry every week. So we actually leverage it because it's, it's fantastic. We, you've been, we've been able to do demos uh, for uh, property managers where we show, you know, how, you know, how to rephrase uh, um, listing description, right? Or how to get five different variations on the same description and incorporating words and sentiment from, let's say, uh, reviews, for example, right? To make things a bit more diff a bit different and uh, a bit relevant to users. But that's only chat GPT, right? And it's been interesting talking with you, Francois, and you, Evan, to understand that there's a whole world outside of it, right? And that's, it's really different. And another hat I, I, I wear, which is I work at Price Labs, which is a dynamic pricing platform. And here, obviously, we work a lot with uh, algorithms, right? Or rules. Uh, or machine learning. But even for me, right, it's been like, what does it really mean? Why should I care? Well, you know, in a way, it's it's very interesting because it's all, it's all about prediction as well, right? When we do dynamic pricing, you're going to recommend and predict prices for the upcoming week, months, or even the year, right? 12 months. So, so this is, it's happening. It's, it's there, right? It's, 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 you see this on the websites, on Airbnb, you see it on, on your, if you use dynamic pricing, you, you have it. So it's, between ChatGP, for example, and again, price predictions and event pricing, as a property manager or property owner, it's right there. It's it's super relevant. That's that's my viewpoint here. But maybe Francois, you know, you want to build on that? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, this goes back to what Evan was mentioning around the difference between machine learning and artificial intelligence. And 
all the, the facades under that, of course, whether it's natural language processing, whether it's image processing, there's different verticals within AI as an overarching uh, concept. And how you're going to use this is going to be the key differentiator in your business. And I think it's, it's what's going to translate the differences between a business that is growing and a business that is scaling. Uh, and fundamentally, it has to do with how much data can your existing team process and probably not as much as an algorithm could. And that means we can start surfacing insights on your guests, on the behaviors, on the patterns in your business and pretty much anything that's going on that involves some form of data. And that that's very much tied to the different tools that you're going to be using, whether it's your property management system, your dynamic pricing tool or even your website builders or guest experience platforms and so on. All of them are going to have different data points that we can use. So one example that I love using is sentiment. Sentiment as a uh, parameter that you can use to assess the state of your guest journey uh, that you could figure out before, during, or after state. It's something that we're going to dive into a bit more uh, very soon. And I think it's also the, the, the beginning of the marker of a concept that, Evan, you introduced me to about a year ago that I think fits so well with uh, the, the, the journey and sort of vision behind Enzo Connect and uh, this concept being predictive, right? So yeah. it's no longer too much about automation. And we all have automation and workflows and automated messages sending out to our guests that, you know, guests don't actually read. Um, but now it's more about how can we be ahead of the game, one step ahead of those guests and figure out what they want before they even know what they want. I know that might sound a bit creepy. It's a good, so, point. It's a good uh, point. And that's actually a good segue into what is predictive hospitality. And what I think predictive hospitality is, and that's a term you're going to start to hear more often, is how we blur the lines between a hotel experience and a short-term rental experience, because there's a lot of differences and barriers that are preventing it from being a similar experience. But with predictive hospitality, you're able to understand what the guests' intent are, what's their behavior, what are their preferences, what are their purchasing power. And with that knowledge, you can start personalizing before the stay on your marketing website, during the stay, Maybe you have concierge services, maybe there are upsells, maybe there are local events. If you understand what your guests like, you can make recommendations to those guests based on their preferences and affinities. And then after the stay, there's so much noise out there. None of you like getting sales emails, but at the end of the day, you're, you're selling to your guests. You're trying to say, hey, trust us, come back. So in order to cut through that noise, we need to make sure every single touch is personalized. So long story short, predictive hospitality is the art of personalizing the guest experience before the stay, during the stay, and after the stay. And that will blur the lines between hotels and short-term rentals. I think you're gonna start seeing us use the uh, hashtag predictive hospitality quite often now in any of our posts. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you already kind of do this somewhere, shape or form and in, in one way or another. Maybe it's not necessarily with artificial intelligence, but you're still technically uh, trying to be ahead of the game with your guests and know what's happening before, uh, before their stay. And if, I'm going to ask a question because I'm, I'm hearing you know, customer insights and the rest. And I know that, you know, I'm slightly older than you are. And I remember sitting in conferences, not VRMA, marketing conferences and being told, you know what, what you should be doing, you should be building personas, right? You have to try to guess who your user is and make two or three personas for your guests. And, and hopefully you're talking to them in your marketing, your content and the rest. But if I understand correctly with all these insights in a way, this predictive hospitality, I can sort of like a profile for each person. So I don't need to build generic personas. It's like for each person it would be uh, because, and you know, you would come back to the office on Monday morning. Yeah, personas. And then you just like flooded with operational stuff. You would never do it. So in a way I can finally get to this kind of like um, insights about my user. And is it something you would say that predictive hospitality is about? 100%, 100%. I mean, I'll dive into this bit uh, very quickly here, but I think the, you know, I've gone through the same exercise, right? Understanding who is my key audience. Is it individual hosts? Is it large property managers? Is it hotels? And I'm, I'm building out this document with our team, right? Where we're going to say, okay, Sandra is 42 and she manages X amount of properties. It doesn't actually show who my clients are. And the beauty of property management is you don't have, let's say, 500 or 1,000 clients that you can work from. You have tens of thousands that are coming to you whether it's at the inquiry stage where they haven't actually booked. That's interesting. It's understanding why that potential qualified lead, as we would call it in the normal sales funnel, is not converting into a booking, right? Why is that? Is it because my property is not being marketed to this type of audience? Who is this type of audience? 
Are they more business travelers? Is it more bachelorette parties? So understanding this information at scale will help you change not just the copy in your listings on your different channels, but also the way you operate, the, the messaging and the tone of your brand, uh, and of course, the tools that you're gonna use uh, to, to, to cater to those different guests, the upsells that you can provide, the guides and the information and so on. So I think AI is, is in a way gonna help you summarize the vast amount of information that you have around those guests uh, to create effectively automated personas that you can guide them to. The human brain is not good at taking a bunch of personas and making sense of it. Like if you think about your marketing team, they probably have no time to do anything. They're constantly grappling with guest data. They're trying to figure out who stayed where, how much did they spend. And they make these spreadsheets, which are like one and done. You can use it once, but then you can't use it again. So the idea of artificial intelligence is how do you do this at scale? How do you personalize every guest based on them, not a group of people, just them? Because every guest is unique. So when you hear the word personas, I wouldn't run away from it. And I wouldn't start telling your marketing team to start figuring it out because there are AI tools, whether it's Enzo Connect and Adaptive, that leverage AI to build the personas for you and all you need to focus on are deploying. So don't go home and start making all these personas because the reality is, is that AI and machine learning are gonna do this at scale for you on autopilot and we'll dive deeper into that. Evan, still, still on you here. So let's talk about, for example, a typical journey, right? I have data, you know, Sometimes you know, before the guest arrives, I know about them. I know maybe you have more information about what they do during the stay, maybe past stay. So what would this kind of like personalization look like using this kind of, of data, right? And again, how concretely, how may I want to use it as a property manager? Yeah, so look, I would compare it to using Amazon or using Instagram. Uh, there's two sides of the story here. There's the existing customer and then there's the anonymous customer. With an existing customer, you have a lot more data on them. You know, when they booked, how much they spent, you have marketing engagement, you have so much more on them, so you're able to understand better what they like. But the reality is your existing customers are maybe less than 1% of your business coming back again and again. It's mostly about how do we take these anonymous web visitors and make, turn them into paying customers. So when you start to personalize on your website, the idea is, is right now your website's, your website's generic. It's random. It's not unique to each guest. And using e-commerce best practices, you have opportunities to serve personalized content to each guest. For example, the featured property section or the recommended rentals for you, or maybe it's the homepage hero image. Why should that be the same for a family of seven in Beverly Hills and an elderly couple from the middle of America? The truth is it should be personalized to them because that's what the OTAs do, that's what social media does, and that's what we expect. So if you land on a website that has artificial intelligence personalizing to each customer, the properties for the family of seven will be large. Maybe they're looking for pools. Maybe they have a gym in the properties and the properties for the elderly couple will be much smaller and tailored to them. And the idea is as they click and as they engage more with your website, you learn about them. Just like when you click on Amazon, just like when you click on Instagram, it starts to show you more things tailored to you. The idea is how do we do this on our website and our marketing to make sure that every single touch point is personalized because every touch point is key. You don't want to waste it. And the way to cut through the noise is by personalizing it to that user. So personalized property recommendations, personalized content descriptions, uh, and so on. Cool. And Francois, what, what do you think of that in terms of like... I couldn't agree more with it. And this is why we brought on Evan as, a, as an advisor at Enzo Connect. So uh, to, to continue to learn on that front, I mean, we, we handle primarily from the inquiry stage to check out beyond. It depends on the inquiry stage based on different property management systems. So you guys have delved into that sort of pre-booking experience a lot more than us. We have with the direct booking website and all these uh, assessments from uh, the different uh, different types of e-commerce players out there in OTAs. On our end, you know, we look at it more as like, okay, you've, you've grabbed that guest, but you don't really know much about that guest yet, right? You've accepted, you've gotten that booking, you know kind of what's going to happen. You have a system in place, but you're not yet sure who is this person, what they do. You could send them a survey, and I'll bet you they won't answer it. You could send them uh, more links to different things to see what they click, and I'll bet you they won't click. I'll bet you the only thing they want is their check-in instructions. They just want to make sure that they can access the unit. And this goes back to what Evan was saying about a hotel experience in a vacation rental. As this market is becoming more and more professional, Guests are expecting that hotel-like experience. 
And the key difference I see, at least, between our hotel accounts and our vacation accounts, vacation rental accounts, is the vast difference in number of messages that you get from your guests. When I book a hotel, I don't care. I'm going to show up. I'm going to check in. I'm going to have a great stay, and that's it. When I book a vacation rental, I have all these questions. And some of it might be, you know, anticipation, which is a great touch point for you to understand what they're looking for. But some of it is also a bit of anxiety of, am I going to be able to show up at the door? And is this a real place? And am, is this exactly what I'm expecting uh, from, from this stay? So these are going to be sort of the elements of touch points that you can use to get the right information from the client to understand how to personalize that experience throughout their stay. Uh, we can dive into the, the how far. Do you want me to kind of share more on the, the experience side here? Uh, or maybe start with, you know, describing the pre-stay. I don't know, Tibo, I'll let you lead this. That's a good idea. Let's 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 imagine somebody's, you know, wants to book something. Can you guys walk me through like a guest journey, right? Between the time they looking at something and they make a decision. And as you said, they, they, uh, they, they are about to come and then they stay at the place and maybe they're after they left. What, what, what will, would, would that look like with this predictive hospitality? Yeah, I think uh, I can explain the highest level because as they lower into your funnel, they're going to start to message you, which is what Francois and Enzo Connect specialize in. So let's start at the top, tippy top of the sales funnel where they just discover you on an OTA and they discover your properties and they click on your profile and they're looking around at your offerings. Then they realize that, hey, they might have a direct booking website. So they Google you, and now they're on your direct booking website. We call that the billboard effect, and that's becoming more common because in e-commerce, it's the same trend. So we're seeing more and more starting to use the OTAs as a billboard and then Google you because they know that they can get 10 to 20% off if they go direct. So now they're on your website. They just came from an OTA, which is likely using machine learning and artificial intelligence to personalize the property recommendations, the photos, and the content. So when they come to your website, the best way to get a guest to return is to meet or exceed their expectations. So at the very least, if you have artificial intelligence personalization, AI personalization on your website, now you're just continuing that personalized experience that they had in the OTAs. So now they're on the website, but maybe they're not ready to put in a date and time in the search box. So you capture them with a featured property so or recommended rentals for you. When that's personalized, what that does is it gives them something to click on. So what we've learned is that people do not like to read. Many websites have a chunky word block describing your family business you're about. Get rid of that because no one knows how to read anymore. Instagram and Amazon, they train us to do research by clicking. So by having that featured property section, they start to click and do their research by going deeper into the funnel. So they'll click one property that they think is right. You go through the photos, but maybe that's not correct. Maybe it's not exactly what they're looking for. So as they scroll down on the property page, we have another set of recommendations, other recommended rentals for you. And what that does is it keeps them clicking this personalized booking loop where they consistently just start clicking options tailored to them. And the more they click, the more they engage, the more you learn about them, or the more the ML engine learns about them, what they want. And the idea is now that, okay, it takes six to eight visits for a site for a guest to come back and press edit. So the next time they come back, they're ready to put the dates and times, and now all your property is generated. If you have above 50, 60 properties, that can be purchased. That can be cognitive overload for any customer. So the idea is how do you take all of those properties and show them the best properties at the front, essentially spoon feeding them what they want to see. What we're doing here is reducing friction every step of the way, increasing their enthusiasm so they spend more and convert at a higher velocity. So I think that that just describes what it's like going from the OTAs to your website. And eventually, maybe they want to ask a question. So they send a message to the OTAs. They send a message to the website. And that's where uh, Enzo Connect steps in. And you can start personalizing your communication. Also, what does it look like on your side? Yeah. Yeah, the pre-stay side. So the pre-stay side is a, is a bit different. Pre-stay side, I say, so you've got that booking. You've captured that booking. You've went, the, the guests went through that whole sort of funnel of understanding what property they wanted. They finally they made their booking. They made their payments. This is where I would say, You've got that, that booking, you get some information. You know, if it's a direct booking, you're probably going to get the, the email, the phone number, and the basic information that you need. If it's an OTA reservation, you're going to get perhaps emails, maybe incomplete data in your property management system or other tools. This is where it's going to start getting problematic. So one of the first steps that you can kind of mask within the verification process of that guest journey 
is the data flow. What information do you need about your guests to understand what kind of stay they want? So is the travel reason important? Is the uh, you know age of the guest or uh, where they're coming from as part of the process, the verification process where you need the IDs and maybe an agreement to be signed or maybe a safety deposit, we're going to collect that information. We're going to make it seamless for the guest to provide that data without having to disrupt uh, your process. But that information shouldn't just sit in a big spreadsheet where you're not going to do anything with it. This is where you could start personalizing the experience, changing the types of messages that you share with them, changing the content that you share with them and the recommendations that you provide based on the data you've collected. For example, if I know that it's a business traveler, then do I really want to be upselling a family cruise getaway type of upsell, or do I would I prefer upselling the, the WeWorks of the area, or an extra monitor, or faster Wi-Fi, although I, sh I do think that everyone should have fast Wi-Fi, and that's it, that should just be a, a baseline, but um, this is where, how are you supposed to know? Now you could ask the question to every single one of your guests, that's just not operationally feasible if you're trying to scale your business. So that pre-stay personalization is really about data, capturing that information so you can use it during the stay. During the stay, though, is where it gets exciting. Not only can you start creating these different types of automations and thinking more about the personas that you're starting to cater to, but you can also start thinking about how to become more proactive or predictive. And this is where we go back to the same concept of predictive hospitality. And my favorite example for that is the concept of sentiment analysis. Now, there's different models. I don't want to get too technical. BARP models, BERT models, and so on. ChatGPT does a fantastic job of that. So most of the platforms that you start working with that may use uh, or may have some form of integration with ChatGPT may start surfacing that information. Uh, and Enzo Connect, this is one of the value propositions of what we'll do is to surface out that sentiment for you so that you can do something as simple as when the guest checks out, if the sentiment was higher than neutral or was highly satisfied, then remind the guest to leave a review. What, are, what does that mean? It's super simple. I mean, it's what every hotel does with post-its on the side. We're just picking out all the happiest customers and reminding them to leave a review. And all the ones that weren't happy, we're just gonna say, thank you, sorry, have a nice day, see you around. Uh, and we're going to then look at that information and try to figure out what are the guests that you're actually catering to. So it's all about that pre-state data collection, the during-state personalization, whether it's in the guidebooks, the upsells, your messaging, your tone of voice, uh, and how you're communicating. And of course, some of that post-state marketing uh, where you can then use you know, MailChimp or uh, if you want to get even more granular, some of the CRMs that are out there to start sending campaigns that aren't just your basic newsletters. Those basic newsletters, I'll give you an example. I think it's about 7 to 12% open rates on those emails that you might be sending, whereas it's an 85% open rate on SMS. Why? Because there's a little blue dot, right? We're, we're used to quick information. Just like we said, we can't read. We're not reading that huge paragraph where you're writing the same content for most of your guests. If you could send a little personalized SMS to every single one of those guests with one thing that you remember, whether it's why they came or you know, what they were expecting from their stay, that information that you collected ahead of the stay, you're going to get way more conversion on uh, that SMS marketing. Now, you could use so many different types of tools out there that do SMS marketing. Uh, it's all just about getting that information in there. See, what well, does that help answer sort of that pre, during, post-stay um, aspect of data collection and, and AI? Sure. Okay. That's it. Clear. Um, and by the way, if people uh, watching have questions, don't hesitate to go to the chat box and leave any questions you may have. Again, we're going to have time at the end for a Q&A, but if during what, you know, what we're talking about, there's some like terms that are very clear of concept, do feel free. And I think let's talk about this again. Uh, um, so what kind of data, again, we talk, so all, all, you, you, all the data you have, you said that you need to collect all this data in a way, right? So. Um, I heard I need, you know, because you want to personalize pre-stay, during the stay, post-stay. So I need, I guess I need to know who this person is, I need to collect data. So what does it really mean? So imagine I want to do this. I really, really want to make it happen in my business. So what are the kind of like steps, the actual steps I need to take as a property manager to implement these AI solutions in my operations, for example? Uh, yeah. And that can be, you know, uh, from... Uh, data security, staff training, integration. What are the actual steps, if you can guide me through that, that would be fantastic. 
more of a sort of lender than you can go on the on the data side if, if you will. I was just gonna say, talk to us. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so I, actually, one. So we're gonna upload on the uh, on the chat side a template on the ChatGPT side of things. I'm sure a lot of you who are in the audience have heard of ChatGPT. So there are templates that you can use to fill in information to put basic content and then spit out different types of responses. You can train your team to start using uh, those types of templates uh, to share with, um, well, to start using and communicating with guests. One of the templates in there can actually be done using a tool called chatbase.co. Uh, this is a, a tool that I, I learned about recently. It's pretty cool. It basically allows you to zap your index information into uh, ChatGPT. And there's a, a dozens of tools that are out there. Of course, Enzo Connect is also integrating, uh, you know, large language models, whether it's the sentiment that I was mentioning or, of course, ChatGPT for content creation and messaging. But this will allow you uh, to effectively use it within your operations. And one of the things I'm a big fan of is it's not just all about the guest experience. It's also about the operations behind the scenes. So how you train your team, how you communicate with your team, especially if they're outsourced, right? They're not necessarily all in the same location. Uh, so you want to make sure they have the same tone of voice, the same messaging, and so on. What this will allow you to do, chatbase.co, will allow you to feed in specific information uh, that you can export from, you know, maybe your drive, your spreadsheets, your Airtable, your PMS, your guest experience platform, really anything, uh, and feed the algorithm to learn from or know from just that information. So then you can ask basic prompts. So we're, we're using it within Enzo Connect to train new staff members. Right? If they're asking us, what's your pricing model? How does it work? Instead of me having to answer that question to a new staff member, they can go in that system and just ask those types of questions. So that's one use case of, of uh, you know, ChatGPT specifically um, in your business. And of course, when it comes to content creation or answering guest messages. Um, name of the tool is chatbase.co. Uh, so as it's spelled, not .com. And so you can check it out. If you look up on Google, I think it's .co, but you can double check that. Um, how about yourself, Evan? How would you say practical use cases? Because it obviously, you guys have a huge data science team and this isn't something necessarily that they can just go ahead and build out themselves uh, as much as some may think yeah. they could. <laughs> no, you can. And honestly, there's going to be so much vaporware, fake companies just trying to sell you AI when you have 10, 20 properties. But if you have 10, 20 properties, even if you could use AI, which you likely can't, is that really worth spending your time or should you be focusing on spending or on increasing the amount of homes you're acquiring or something else? So AI is really effective when you hit scale. And I think uh, Enzo Connect's a great entry point when you're looking at trying to use AI to respond to guest inquiries and so on. Um, but beyond that, AI chatbots, AI this, AI that, you don't need it unless you have, let's call it 50 to 100 plus properties because that's when AI is very effective, when there's too much data for the human brain to handle. So to start, I think the best entry point is just education. Just understanding what is artificial intelligence? What's machine learning? What's natural language processing? Because from there, you can start to be more tactical as to how you would fix your problem with AI. Because right now, I think everyone's trying to sprinkle a little AI on this, sprinkle a little AI on that, let's solve all these problems. But AI is not going to solve your problems. So I think Francois did an excellent job at describing how to start getting involved with it. But the more you educate yourself, the more you'll think of actual and practical AI solutions to solve your tangible business problems rather than just saying, use AI to solve this and that. So I think education is key. I like your point about, you know, why should I care about this? Because indeed, right right now, if it's like everybody's sending me emails about we have AI, we have we have things like this. So it's it, it, I like the, the the expression of vaporware. Can you, can you explain a bit more what vaporware is? I think you have a pretty good uh, explanation of what that would mean. Yeah, vaporware, it's a scary word. Um, you think of like the Terminator or, or robots taking over when you hear vaporware. But really the key word is vapor. It's nothing. So it's branded AI. They saying they have, oh, we can do this and that using AI. We can respond to every guest inquiry at chatbot on your website. The truth is booking.com spent a billion dollars on their chatbot and they can't even answer 50% of all their inquiries without a human. So you really think these small little companies that came out of the blue two months ago, with no real employees are gonna be able to solve all your problems, that's vaporware. When someone's over-promising and it's certainly gonna under-deliver. And this is where I would add the, the, the thing you've always said that I, I agree with, it's like, it's not about replacing humans, right? It's, it, the AI is not gonna be, you know, even in our use case, the one that we're launching towards the end of the month for any client that signs in 2022 to get access to it, um, is 
you know, it's not about automatically sending messages to your guests. Because uh, it's going to get it right most of the times, but it's also going to get it wrong. Those times where it's going to get it wrong, you're going you're gonna to reach back out to us and say, why did it get it wrong? So it's more about the humans that use AI um, are going to leave. What, can, can you yeah, that uh, I love that. Sentence. AI is not going to replace people. Yeah. But people that use AI will replace people. So it's anyone that uses AI is going to outperform those that don't. And the reality is, is that they're just 10xing their efficiency because instead of just dealing with one thing and spending all your brain power, AI is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. So now you can focus on 10 things at the same time. So it's the idea of how do you double your revenue without having to double your workforce is deploying AI solutions effectively. Uh, indeed, like uh, I think a couple of weeks ago on Rental Scale Up, I wrote an article about this, right? And it's like, I, ju I, just, try I just took like, you know, 15 press releases I got and just try to say, I, I divided this up into three families. Like number one is people who basically, when they say they have AI, chat GP, GP4, I was like, okay, who actually has just like a shortcut from their existing product into ChatGTP, right? Which is like the loosest, easiest thing you can do, right? Just like you have a product and then suddenly unrelated, it, it, it's a link launching something that's calling ChatGPT, for example, to improve uh, product descript your you know, listing description, whether you're, the, but it's not integrated at all into the company that the core product, the company is actually running, right? But they are now, they are now using ChatGTP, which is basically giving interface for you to use it you could be go just go to chat G gpt to do it for example the second i kind of noticed was indeed people who have it more integrated into that product so it's like uh chat gdp into that product's so a bit more uh, uh easier to use but it's like you know maybe it's helping it's a company for example a pms for example a pms that would you know usually in a pms you have the description of the property and they enable you to create new versions of the descriptions that's that's interesting and then I was, is, I think it was coming from you, Francois, you, you, you guys released the fact that you are using GTP4 at the moment. So uh, integrating to your product, but to be very concrete, what would it mean? And what's, what's um, using chat GTP4 in your case, there is this uh, natural language processing uh, uh, capabilities. How, what does it look like in terms of, you know, uh, guessing queries, language translation, uh, and from just using chat, GPT integrated to this. So make us like understand what it looks like. 100%. So there's four segments within Enzo Connect that we use AI for, two of which are available for any clients 2022 and before, and uh, will be available for everyone by the end of this month. Um, the other two have been live since day one. In fact, one of them uses uh, GPT 2.0. We just never announced it because back in the days, it didn't really matter uh, whether you use 2, 2.5, 3, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Uh, so the first one I, I, I talked about briefly earlier on, which is around sentiment analysis. So very simple, just understanding all of those conversations that you're having with your guests, prioritizing, uh, or sorry, before we get into the prioritization, just understanding who's unhappy and who's happy. So this is a very basic thing. And honestly, I recommend anyone with the implied inbox to, to, to get this built, uh, even our competitors, because it will add so much value for the operators and the clients, understanding who's who needs to get dealt with first, uh, who's a priority. The second bit is around a priority inbox. So this is also understanding what is all this information. Now, this isn't necessarily AI. It's using the data, the, the, the spit out data of uh, these algorithms to, to prioritize the conversations. So, so the ones that are checking in today recently uh, that are unhappiest probably should deserve more attention than someone who's checking in in six months and making sure that there's a canoe at the, at the property that they do rent. So just understanding how to prioritize that. Um, we briefly talked about guest persona, so this is something that we're currently actively working on uh, to surface that information better for our clients. And of course, uh, content creation. So whether we don't do listing descriptions because we're not a property management system, but upsell generation, uh, guidebooks creation. This is all about saving time and doing things at scale um, with the final bit that's accessible for everyone towards the end of the month for uh, actually answering your guest messages. Now, as Evan mentioned, this is not a chatbot. This is not going to just take away all your problems and get rid of your, your guest service team. It's going to give the tools to your guest service team to have a consistent brand message, uh, to always have the accurate information from different systems without having to jump into different platforms, like, you know, check-in times and is the property available and is the property clean? Like, I can summarize all of this information in a very easy English sentence 
without your team making mistakes, jumping from one place to the next by simply summarizing it using a tool like ChatGPT. So it's not rocket science. It's just applying and repurposing existing algorithms in the right places and enabling the humans to use it in an efficient way, not replacing the humans in any way, shape, or form. I know maybe a few of you in the audience might be thinking like, well, I was hoping to just get rid of my entire team. Uh, that's not going to be the case. Uh, and if anyone is trying to sell you that, then trial it first before you pay. <laughs> if, if, uh, if I can add, look at it like this. Right now, your customer support team is responding to, let's call it, 100 inquiries a day. If you have a ChatGPT assistant like Enzo AI that is helping power the response of your teams, even if it's only 75% of all of the words, and the last 25% are personalized. If they can increase their velocity to 500 responses a day, now you just 5X the efficiency of each customer support rep. So the idea is just like stop retyping the same thing, stop responding to the same things, have ChatGPT do the redundancies. That way your team can focus on the small touches that are personalized. So you increase the, the, the personalized touch points, but you also increase the velocity of the amount of responses that you're giving in a day. So I think that's a good summary. 100%. You know your business better. You know your location better. You know what the experience is going to be best for someone coming to visit. I mean, Evan is here in Toronto, so I already know where we're going out tonight. What restaurant? Apparently, we're going to a comedy bar, too. And all that because, well, actually, you recommended the comedy bar. But um, I know which restaurant to go to because I kind of know who Evan is, right? And so if I can take that time to personalize that type of experience and not deal with the P6 the, the ongoing tedious questions that are going to be the same anyways. Um, this is where, again, it's about saving you, your team time and making your operation. Yeah, but we talk about vaporware. So again, for me to understand, because we talked about the vision, uh, but what you just talked about is something you guys have, for example, at Enzo Connect. It's it's there, this GP4 integration, or is it coming up? What, what should you expect? client that's previous to uh, the new year has access to the beta, but we're indexing data. And the reason behind that is effectively just understanding that ChatGPT is not always accurate, right? It'll make assumptions that you don't want it to make assumptions on. Uh, the templates uh, that we, we shared in the in the chat base is a great example of how, to, how, how we're indexing information, how we're bringing the summaries further into this. It's what we call a temperature setting. So if it's too warm, it's going to make too many assumptions. It's going to be very relaxed. It's just going to say, oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, you could also leave the luggage uh, near the front door. It's like, wait, no, I never told you that you could say that you could leave the luggage in the front door. We don't do that in my business. So we're, we're playing around with that sort of temperature setting to understand where uh, we can get the most accuracy for the hospitality industry. Um, and we're, uh, we're making it available for everyone by the end of the month. So uh, at this point, it's just finalizing all those tweaks and, and so on. Sentiment analysis, priority inboxes, all that, that's available uh, anytime. I think for vaporware specifically is the over promises, not just chat GPT, but AI in general, that AI will solve all of your problems, that you'll replace humans and that there won't be the need for any anything else other than this magical AI that will do everything for you. And I think this is where it goes back to what Evan was saying. It's about education. It's about sharing more. What is real? What is not real? What are the real expectations? What are personal intelligence will bring to my business? Uh, and what is just... Yeah. And uh, for vaporware, the idea is how do you spot it? How do you detect vaporware? vaporware? And there's many ways, but the best way, in my opinion, is go on LinkedIn. Go look at the team's pedigree. If they just came out of the blue a month, two months ago, odds are it's not going to work. It's not real artificial intelligence. So go look at the team's pedigree, see what they've done in the past, and that should give you insight to is this team building something real or is it just branded AI? And now that's the fastest, easy way to do your due diligence on is it vaporware or is it actually effective? 100%. Oh, I, li I like somebody asking, Evan, how did you put it? AI won't replace people, but it will yeah. replace people who do not okay. use AI. Two ways. Right? There's two ways to put it. There's two ways to put it. First is that humans that use AI will outperform those that don't. So that's, that's number positive. one. <laughs> and then the other is AI won't replace people, but people that use AI will replace people. So it's the idea that AI won't replace people by itself, but humans empowered with AI will certainly replace the humans that run away from it because they're gonna be more effective. They're just gonna be 10X better and more efficient at their job. Thinking about, again, I'm thinking about pricing here and, and revenue management in a way, right? A lot of uh, property managers nowadays have revenue managers or they outsource to some consultancy, right? And these revenue managers, you know, it's it's a job that's ex 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 
that has existed for decades. But now they use software, you know, that's going to predict or recommend prices, like you know, price slabs, for example, right? It's not replacing them, right? It's actually saving them time. For example, when it, when they need to automate updates across, you know, dozens of listings, but then they can they, they free up that time to think about strategies or to think about, you know, how to launch a new property instead of having to handle everything at the same time. So it, it is the same token, right? It's like it's not, they have not been replaced by this kind of software that indeed could, could automate the pricing if they want to, but then change that to have an, or, some, some kind of strategy. We still need a human here. It's not very completely comparable, obviously, because the price of AI that normally you should, it could make, it could make its own decisions, even without some kind of a precise inputs, I'm, I'm guessing. But it's, I think the comparison is here. Sometimes software is also made to be used. And also it's not because you're buying something that you, you still need to implement it, train your people, I'm guessing, and actually use it, right? It's also the difference. Um, next big thing as well, all this kind of, it's very, I don't know why it's so noisy. All this kind of software, I mean, it's collecting a lot of data. So isn't it worry, worrisome for people in terms of ethics? If all this kind of data and be even, you want to take it? Space. Yeah. Well, first, let me just respond to the revenue management portion, because I think that's where the revenue manager, management industry is going. For a while, it's just been adjusting the rates, adjusting the numbers. But now, they, how much can you adjust the numbers before you're negotiating against yourself? So now revenue managers have to find new ways to drive revenue, which is what we're doing at Adaptive, which is essentially, let's, let's, say, let's take, for example, the featured property section. Yeah, it might be a very simple touch, but if you start putting those in places that weren't generating revenue before, like a blog, for instance. So let's say you're in, go, look. Let's say a guest is looking for for snowboard rentals, and they're they're likely also looking for a place to stay. So if you can have a recommended property section on the blog, then you can take that person's attention, get them to click on one of the properties, and now they're in your booking funnel. So by actionizing some of these places where revenue management wasn't necessarily located before, you're finding new outlets to drive more revenue. So I do think AI personalization is starting to go in tandem with the traditional revenue management tactics. Now, regarding ethics, uh, I'm terrible at predicting the future. I don't even try, especially with artificial intelligence. It's always awake, always learning, always improving. We are hitting that hockey stick curve where AI is working behind the scenes while we're out drinking and partying, AI is improving. So regarding ethical, yeah, of course there are gonna be bad actors. There, of course, is gonna be misbehavior and people trying to use AI to scam you. Um, I'm particularly scared of like the deep fakes they're able to change your facial imagery to be someone else, your voice. So you could be FaceTiming with me, video chatting with me, and it might not even be me. It might be someone else using AI to change up what, they're, what they look like and how they sound. So regarding ethical questions, I think that's the side that should be focused on the most. But when it comes to personalization or increasing communication, the reality is that's been used on you for the last 10 years by Booking.com by Expedia, by Airbnb, by Amazon, by Google, by Facebook, I can name any big tech company has been using this AI on you for 10 years. And it's purely to increase your, the, the usability of your experience. It's to increase the efficiency of what you're trying to get to, which is the end zone. Maybe it's to buy a product. Maybe it's to communicate with someone. So look, if, if you don't want to use AI personalization on your website or AI to communicate, you're just going to be behind everyone else. Because when they come from the OTAs, that's the expectation they have. And the best thing you can do is continuity. Continue that level of personalization. And the only way to do that is with AI. So I do think there is a, a divergence as to ethical questions and practicality. And, um, but yeah, of course, there are going to be bad actors. I, I, I would add to the, to the ethical piece, though, there's, there's two components. So there's ethics and then there's privacy, right? Yeah. And, and I think the two can get a bit uh, convoluted or, or mixed up. The ethical piece... As Evan pointed out, like, yeah, there's going to be bad actors, there's going to be people who use this to, to, to scam you in, in so many different ways. In fact, I think it happened to me recently getting a, a message that was so personalized. I was like, I had to click the link and I, I usually would never. And, you know, they would be told it was it was a scam. So how are they getting this information? Well, maybe from these webinars, I don't know, but they're getting the information somewhere. Um, I, would, I want to talk a bit more, though, about that privacy aspect, because I know that's a concern specifically for the European uh, community. It is a concern as it should be globally as a, an industry, uh, simply because you are accepting guests from around the world. So by virtue of accepting guests that are European, that are Canadian, that are from any other country, you have to abide by certain privacy standards, such as the famous GDPR. There's a new one in Switzerland, Capita in Canada, and so on. Um, I think 
one thing to be aware of is that a lot of this information, a lot of this data is actually anonymized. It's not about the person. It's not about that one individual. It's not about knowing exactly who Tebow is and then being able to um, do something. Well, I mean, it is, but it's doing it at scale. And therefore, it's all anonymized. It's all numbers and, and codes, if you will, to, to know who Tebow is as a persona. So you should be aware of the information that you're feeding uh, any large language model, any machine learning model. You should understand the cybersecurity behind those different um, systems and companies. Uh, there was recently a breach with OpenAI, and obviously some people were using it to share financial data and spit out more outputs, and all of that are risks that you might be taking. Now, I'm not trying to scare you from this, this concept. This is going to happen whether you use AI or not, um, but it's just uh, being aware of what kind of information, what sensitive information are you sharing that you might not want to necessarily share with those different models. And I'll, uh, I'll add to that that when you start speaking to these companies selling you an AI solution, two things. One, any data cultivated, any new data from the clicks, from the engagements, are yours, not theirs. If they try to hoard any data, run the other direction. Your data is your gold, and any inbound data is yours. and should be 100% yours. Protect that like it's gold. And the second part is that for machine learning to work, you can't commingle it with a bunch of other companies. It needs to understand your core business, competencies, and customers. So the idea is, is that it's your machine learning engine tailored to your business. And if you start sharing data across customers, this aggregate data that's being sold, it's not going to be personalized for your business. So two things, data should not be shared, and data is yours. So keep that in mind when speaking to any of these uh, AI solutions. 100%. I'm still wondering about past data. I think we talked about this briefly, but maybe I missed it. But what if, you know, my, um, how do I retrieve data that's maybe sitting in my PMS or in my old you know, emails I get? How do I actually, because I, I can imagine it's a treasure trove of data insights. How would I do that? People are lucky. People are lucky that these systems have been culti cultivating data passively because you are sitting on tre tre treasure, treasure troves of data. And the idea is, is that your PMS has the richest data of it all. It has previous bookings, who the customer is, what they spent, when they looked, the property attributes. It's got the whole picture. So uh, the way that AI would, would start to make sense of that is by essentially connecting to that and ingesting the data into the engine. But it's a problem of what is the engine trying to solve? Is it trying to personalize photos? Is it trying to personalize communication? But what that's doing, look at the engine as a place for you to connect all of these fragmented data sources that aren't talking to each other. So the PMS, connected. Uh, the, your, your marketing cloud, connected. Your CRM, connected. If you connect all of that into the machine learning engine, that will make the personas for you. That will make uh, decisions for you. So the idea is, is that you're not going to be able to make sense of all the data in your PMS with your brain. But a machine learning engine will be able to decipher it, start to draw meaningful connections across who's this guest, what are they looking to spend. So it's the idea that it's there, and a machine learning engine will decipher it for you in a blink of an eye. And again, to be, to be clear here, when you say connect this data to a machine learning module or things, it's this kind of like services that you guys provide, right? I would, I mean, what I yeah. mean is that as a property manager, I would get out and find a solution a bit like yours, and that would be the thing I connect to, right? Yeah, it's like making an account. So if you log in at Thibaut at, or FrancoisEnzoConnect.com, you add another account for adaptive at EnzoConnect.com, add it to the PMS, and then we'll be able to extract the data takes like two minutes of their time just to add the account. 100%. And if you want to play around with the insights of like what AI could do for my business without committing to any solution that's out there, but just to kind of understand and play around. This is where I go back to that link that I shared right above the chatbase.co where, you know what, throw it in an Excel spreadsheet into that system, right? Just throw it in there and ask a couple questions about your guests. Ask a couple questions about your properties and see what outputs it spits out. Does it actually give you good insights on the type of guests? Does it give you good insights on the types of property and your brand and so on? And, and maybe that'll excite you to understand why some of the new gen companies that are coming out there uh, are, are coming out with different solutions that aren't just, you know, I'm going to answer all of your guest messages, messages for you, but rather let's surface out who those guests are, what your business is all about. So um, that's a good drill. Yeah, I think that's I a really good, like, yeah. test it out, just give it a shot and see like, oh, wait, this is what it could do. Because I feel like everyone's, like there's like kind of this inflection point with ChatGPT where it was like, you know, it came out as 3.5. Everyone got excited. We saw it all over LinkedIn. 
And we're like, wow, this is going to solve all my problems. And then you start using it a bit and you're like, wait a minute, no, this doesn't really work for me. And you get to that bottom of that, infl- it's called the Gardner hype cycle. You get to the bottom of that hype cycle where you're like, well, this isn't going to work for me. This, uh, yeah, my business is different because I have to do it like this and like that. And the education piece, this goes back to what Evan was saying of like understanding like what will work and what will not work is what will get you to that sort of stable part of, okay, this is another tool that I'm using to optimize my business. And as you said, to be that human with AI, I'm going to let you use that yeah. again and again. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great way to just uh, to practice is go on ChatGPT and start a thread about a specific subject. If you've written things in the past, yeah. feed it. Look at ChatGPT like your baby that you need to grow with data. All it consumes is data. If you feed it thousands of pages of things you've written, it's going to learn that right away. And yeah. then you can ask it questions about the things you've written. And you can say, summarize these thousand pages into 10 bullet points from 50 words each. So the idea is the more data you feed the engine, the more it will learn about what you're trying to do. And then you just have to ask it specific tasks about what you're trying to accomplish. But I think that's a great drill to understand how machine learning works, around how you can train machine learning, how you can give it certain inputs so it understands what you're trying to do. It's as, it's as good as it gets as a training, uh, a training method. Yeah, I like it. It's very concrete. We, we basically we talked a bit how to, you know, uh, be wary of vaporware. Like so, now I'm gonna get getting next time I'm get, I'm, get, I'm seeing press releases or vendors. I'm be, be like, okay, I can I think I can talk a bit more or understand a bit more what they're doing. We talked about also trying out. I like this. Like, what does it actually do? Um, so trying out again to be to be super concrete. I would use the prompts the document. So in the chat again, there's like a link. Uh, probably if you're watching this in the replay with a video, we'll share the document, I'm guessing. So I should be using the, uh, the, the prompt templates and, uh, and all the tool we use the, uh, chat based stuff or not, or I'm getting confused here. Yeah. Use it, use it, give it a shot, play around with it. I mean, I'm not getting any special promo codes, by the way, from referring chat yeah, basically. Yeah. They, they don't even know who I am, quite frankly. We just started sure. playing around with it, realized it was a good user interface. It's like that sort of first step to, to dive into it. Right. And then you've got, of course. For the larger property managers, I would say, uh, on on Evan's side. So I don't know what your your cap is, but yeah, hundred yes. properties. <laughs> we, we the reality is machine learning needs a ton of data. So if you want AI personalization at your website, you should try to hit hundred properties as soon as you can. But also try to drive as many web web visitors as possible. Usually we see that threshold around ten thousand monthly web visitors because again these engines need to learn. And 10,000 web visitors is about the threshold of data because they're clicking enough for the engine to train. So 100 properties, 10,000 web visitors, and then uh, we can provide AI personalization. So that way every website uh, visit and every marketing email is unique to that specific customer. Fantastic. We, we, we talked about vaporware. We talked again about how to get a trial. If I want, again, another way probably to get ready is to stay in contact with the, the two of you, right? So if people, people want to reach out or want to, to know more, what's the best way to, to contact each of you? We're all over it. We're all over LinkedIn for me. Okay. Yeah. LinkedIn for him. I, I don't check my LinkedIn inbox enough, so send me an email. Uh, it's firstname.lastname at enzoconnect.com. So that's Francois Aguello at enzoconnect.com. Um, you can also check out our website. We've got all of our functionality there, different clients that share what they've benefited from uh, using things like Enzo Connect. Uh, and you can, of course, join the waitlist if you want to get on uh, the latest version of ChatGPT for your inbox and so on. So um, appreciate Thibault with that. Uh, and how can they reach out to you, Thibault? Because you're, you're the master of ceremonies here. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> you basically it's yeah LinkedIn LinkedIn works so just go to rentalscaleup.com rentalscaleup.com slash newsletter for example you get me in your inbox for free every week with articles and news all right thank you all for attending thank you Francois from Enzo Connect Evan from Adaptive from attending today Enzo Connect Sasha for organizing appreciate this and everybody for attending uh, I wish you a great day and great afternoon wherever you are thank you take care everyone thank you.